So as I was pondering what to say, the Lord uh, was speaking to me at about his peace. And he said, I want you to entitle the message Victorious Faith. So you can go to the first slide of Isaiah 26, 3 through 5. See, we're not going to allow the giants in the land produce fear in our lives. And it's a really important that we recognize where are we at in our faith walk. And again, it's not a condemning word. It's just check out where you're at. And so I know where I'm at and I know where I have weaknesses and where I want to move on. And I know where I feel I'm pretty strengthened. But, you know, I just always want to keep moving. You know, the glory cloud was always moving. We don't ever want to be stagnant. Amen. So this scripture, which I love, and I'm to, I have it in a couple of different versions because I want you to get the message. In, in Isaiah 26, 3 through 5, it says, Perfect, absolute peace surrounds those whose imaginations are consumed with you. They confidently trust in you. Yes, trust in the Lord Yahweh forever and ever. For Yah, the God, Lord God, is your rock of ages. Now, I love that because what's your imagination saying to you? Right? What What do you focus on? You know, the media, you know, the media's gone crazy. And, and the media has released a, a fear frenzy. They really have. And, um, you know, and again... You know, yes, do we want to be informed? Absolutely. But I'm sorry, they're not going to dictate my emotional response and how I'm going to walk in this season. I still have to go back to the rock who is higher than I and keep my eyes fixed upon the Lord. Because I don't know about you, but, you know, I think most of us have experienced fear and worry, right? Because there's over 365 scriptures on that. So the Lord knows that we needed one for each day. And the Lord knows that that is something that the enemy loves to target us with. And it gets us and he tries to ambush us. And I hate being ambushed. And I've been ambushed in my walk many, many times where I totally like freaked out. But God. And so, but he met me where I was at. He didn't, you know, kick me aside and say, what's your problem, girl? You know, when are you going to get this thing down? No. He met me where I was at. And I said, Lord, I don't want to be ambushed. I don't want this thing to overtake me because if greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world, then I need to be walking over and overcoming what the enemies release against me. But that comes through our sacrifice and our spending time in the Lord. And we're going to review that a little bit. Um, in Colossians, the next one, I thought I, 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 de I decided to not give you all the different versions. But, all right, in, in Colossians 3.15, it says, Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which you were also called in one body, and be thankful. Let the peace of God. Let's go to the next one in the Amplified. It says, Let the peace, soul harmony, which comes from Christ's rule, let this peace act as an umpire continually in your heart deciding and settling with finality all questions that arise in your mind in that peaceful state to which as members of Christ, one body, you were also called to live and be thankful, appreciative, giving praise to God always. See, peace has to be the umpire in our life. Peace calls the shot, not fear, not fright, not worry. Peace calls the shot because the, one of the names of God, one of the redemptive names of God is Jehovah Shalom that he is the God of all peace and I'm one with the God of peace. And that it says in Romans that the God of peace will crush Satan under our feet shortly. Amen. Well, how do we get there? And we're going to talk about that, but see, I love that. He says, let peace, my supernatural peace be that umpire. Don't you think it, it's a, a strategy from the enemy to get us all freaked out and all we're all, well, here's what the media is saying. Well, here's what God's word is saying. Here's what the word is saying. Let's focus on that, not freak out. Yes, do we use precautions? But here's what the word of God says. But they mock. Uh, we've been mocked this week and laughed at. But see, that's not my problem. You know, that's their problem. My problem is honoring God. And so the Lord wants us to know that he is the God. He's the author of peace. So now that word peace there, I think it's on the next slide. Okay. It means exemption from the rage and havoc of war, harmony, security, a tranquil state of soul in this particular scripture. 
So the Lord is saying to me, keep your eyes saying us fix on me. He says, I want to keep that exemption of rage and freaking out and havoc of war, war in our flesh, war saying that you're going to die, war saying you're going to get this disease or your, your finances. Let's look at finances, people with businesses that are freaking out, right? So that word rule is, uh, I don't know how to say it, but it means to govern umpire. Basically what it said in the Amplify, we are allowed we are to allow the peace of God govern our decision. Or do you have peace with your decision? There are times in my life that my knees have been knocking, but I had a peace inside. Did that ever happen to you? Where you know it's like, I don't get it, man, but I, am, I got this peace, but I'm scared. That doesn't mean you're not walking in faith. That's what happens a lot of times, but you know that you're developing that, that walk with Christ where he is strengthening our hearts. I was thinking of uh, the 10 plagues right? In Exodus, look at what they had to go through. I said, Lord, I'm glad I'm living in my day and age, but they had to deal with all the bugs and, and, and all those things, all the different plagues, you know, but they had to trust God and they were deity. They were demonic gods that they worship. This virus is a demon that's been released against the nations. And here, they, what, cut, what protected them was the blood of Jesus. They had it on their doorposts, on the doorposts of our heart, knowing that he is the great I am. And it is because of the power of the blood of Jesus, him dying, the sprinkling, the Bible says in Hebrews, the sprinkling of his blood that sanctifies us as we repent. See, God's not saying to us, listen, it's your problem here on earth. No, he's given us tools and weaponry. He wants us to operate in fear and worry. And the Lord's saying, keep your eyes on me. That's a strategy. Worship, humble yourself, pray. It's not about going to 14 meetings. What it is, is are you developing your own prayer walk with God, your own love walk with him? That's, that's the, he says, you know, he that dwells in the secret place. Not just, you know, is there or here every now and then. He that dwells in the secret place in the Most High. Your abiding presence in him. So, the next scripture. This is so good. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. says, be anxious for nothing. Nada. Nand. Nothing. Okay? That means nothing. No thing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, it says be anxious for nothing. Do you not think he knew about this plague? Yeah. Right? He knows what he was doing. He died. He, he's creator God. He's Elohim. He knew this. He knows the end from the beginning, the beginning, beginning from the end. Be anxious for nothing. Not your money not your house, not your health, not your kids. Be anxious for nothing but in everything. So let me read it to you out of the other version in the Amplified. Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance and situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. All right, he's saying don't be anxious, but pray. Have a heart of gratefulness and thank God. Say, Lord, I know you've got this. I know, Lord, I'm choosing to trust you with all my heart. Listen, and then the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. Isn't that good? That peace, it assures us. But listen to what this definition of peace is. Love this. It means to prevent a hostile invasion. I mean, you think like that's what's happening? There's a hostile invasion happening that's coming against our faith and our belief in what we stand for? This hostile invasion's under my feet. The Bible says that we don't have to submit to this. It says here that it's protected by a military guard. Who's that? Holy Spirit either to prevent a hostile invasion or to keep the inhabitants of a besieged city from flight. This is from the concordance, okay? To be a watcher in advance. Well, the Lord was speaking to us about getting prepared, getting prepared with our faith walk, to hem in, he's, to protect. This is what this supernatural peace does. When we choose not to respond in faith, that mindset locks us into a natural mindset, natural limitations. God says, listen, this supernatural peace is such a powerful weapon 
that the enemy hates it. So do you think he has a strategy to get us out of peace and enter into total turmoil of fear and anxiety because he knows it can kick your behinds and my behind. It's like, no, Lord, you have peace. There's a supernatural peace. We're like in this invisible bubble. My niece just came back from Iceland. They were only there a day because they had to come back because of the travel ban. But they have this, um, uh, it's uh, like an invisible, it's called a bubble where they sleep. And it's a glass bubble, which I would hate because everybody can look in and see you sleeping. Anyway, but that's how it is spiritually. We have this invisible protection, this guard around us, protecting us. He that dwells in the secret place in the most high. The Lord is saying, you were protected by me. Choose to trust me even if you're afraid. Choose to worship me. Choose to decree my word. See, that's the power. That's how God has built our faith up. That's the strategy, what he wants us to do. Not keep listening and focus on what's the wrong thing. I've told you that when I was battling with these darn panic attacks. I was like, Lord, I can't take this anymore. And I'm quoting the scripture and I'm quoting and I'm praying and I'm renouncing, I'm repenting. And I'm like, oh, and I was still battling, you know, and, but it was a consistency. It was that persistence and pressing through. And it is a spirit, which we'll deal with in a minute. But I, I mean, I was dealing everything I know to do. And it was this particular day that Reverend Shambach was still alive. And it was on the radio. And he's like, I turned the radio on and it scared me. <laughs> he said, stop fearing. And I mean, I jumped. And I'm like, who's this guy? And so, but, but it was the Lord saying to me, stop it. He said, you keep focusing on everything that's wrong. You know, my husband was three minutes late. Oh, my God. Where is he? I wasn't concerned that he was doing anything wrong. It was the enemy was lying to me that something happened to him. Calamity. Calamity and this fear thing was overwhelming. And I had to just press through. And I said, Lord, I choose to align with you. I choose to align with your word. I choose to renounce the spirit of fear. I choose to renounce the lie that says fear is greater than you. He's the great I am. And Lord, I need that supernatural peace. I need that peace in the midst of turmoil. I have peace. I have peace about what's happening. I have peace. I know God has us. God loves his people. He says no weapon that is formed against us will prosper. He's got us. He's protecting us. Amen.